The 2023 season is just around the corner and we're going to be soon drafting or redraft teams here in a few months. A lot of us are in those best ball leagues and underdog and we're already drafting. But let's look at some five potential breakout players going into 2023 that help boost our teams to give us that edge. If this is something you're into, make sure you hit that subscribe button right now. Just give it a quick tap that way you don't miss any of this content throughout the season, any player clips, dynasty videos, redraft, lineup setting, whatever is out there on this channel, you won't miss out on. But let's look at five potential breakouts for the 2023 NFL season. If you got anybody you want to add to the list, put it in the comment section below. But the first player we're going to be talking about today is falling to the 12th round of ADP and underdog drafts right now. And he was productive last year, missed some time due to injury, but was productive, shown some signs of life. We're talking about Greg Dolchitz, tight end of the Denver Broncos. In four of his 10 games, he saw eight or more targets. In five games, he had 75 air yards or more. He had 19.3% targets per route ran. So when he's running routes, he's getting targeted often. Six among all tight ends and slot snaps. Remember, he only played in 10 games last year, so this is high-end opportunities for him. He's getting air yards. He's getting targets, especially for a rookie in a new offense coming back from an injury, getting opportunity, and you're getting him very cheap in round 12 of ADP. You're talking like tight end two range, so a cheap tight end that you can get in drafts right now that could be a sneaky breakout option. But going to the wide receiver position, this guy isn't super sneaky, especially on this channel in the comment section. A lot of people love this guy. A lot of people are talking about this guy. But I got to bring him up because I also like him too. And I also like talking about him. I've been talking about him for a few years on the channel. So I have the right to talk about him right now because I've been in the life right now in those streets talking about him. Nico Collins. Wide receiver of the Texans. Been a fan of him since Michigan. This guy can get air yards downfield. And he's being drafted in the 12th round of ADP and underdog fantasy drafts, which is a format that plays into his skill set. Considering he is with CJ Stroud right now, his deep ball accuracy, we should see more deep ball volume. Only 50% of his passes were catchable last year. We should see that increase to some extent. Stroud's a rookie, so we should expect rookie things, but still. He had a 20% target share, 75 air yards per game, but those air yards equated to 30% share of the team's passing air yards. So looking at that from a rate perspective, we should see his air yards per game rack up a little bit more because CJ Stroud can push it downfield better, and he's going to get more accurate targets downfield, especially more down the season as Stroud Feels more comfortable in the offense. You're catching him at a good discount as well. We should see the ball push downfield more often. We should see it going his way. And the team did not add any wide receivers of consequence this offseason. So Nico Collins should roll this year in a good opportunity. If you're looking for a running back getting ready to break out, we need to look at running backs who can catch the ball in the backfield who has some good juice in the legs, also has to be cheap. If not, everyone's drafting him anyways. Let's look at Rashad Wyatt, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Eighth round ADP on underdog right now, so you can catch him at a discount. Has huge upside. Leonard Fournette is gone. Averaged over five targets per game during his final six games of the season. He also saw 34% more yards per touch during the final eight games of the year as well for him. That means he increases productivity, he increases efficiency just a wee bit as the season went on, as he got more comfortable. He wasn't the most efficient running back in the league. That's one thing you can say, but what we're looking at is what he can do in the passing game and catch the ball in the backfield. Also has opportunities to be the lead guy, and at this price tag, you're getting a good guy to shoot on here. And for him to be a breakout candidate, if he's catching a few balls out of the backfield per game, using that athleticism, that could lend a helping hand. 
But if you want to pivot from him to another running back that could break out, that you can catch on a discount this year, then we're going to have to go to an old faithful because everybody's been talking about him as breaking out every single year. But this might be it. Cam Akers of the Rams, round 6 ADP on underdog right now. He averaged 18.46 PPR fantasy points per game in his final five games of the season last year. After he got the starting nod in week 13, it was wheels up. He got plenty of opportunities. He became the starter. They did not add any real threats. Zach Evans was drafted late in the draft. Huge upside with him. If you're looking for a huge upside flyer off waivers during the season, he's the guy we're going to be talking about a lot. Mike LaFleur's new offensive coordinator. He likes to use his running backs in the passing game. We might see more routes ran by Akers, more opportunities and targets, more things like that happening for Akers, plus round six price tag. Cheap get, especially if you're pounding wide receiver early. But we like pounding wide receivers. We don't want to stray away from them. I have the biggest, biggest riser this year, and I guarantee you something's going to happen as long as he's healthy. Jahan Dotson of the Commanders, huge breakout candidate this year. Round 7 ADP on underdog. Solid get, solid price tag right now. Had a 23% target share in his last five games. Pretty solid number there for a rookie. While averaging 94 air yards per game. So you're getting target share, you're getting the air yards. What's not to like about this dude? 30% of his targets were not catchable. The quarterback position is still not that great. But if it increases... By a fraction of the percentage. If it just gets a little bit better. And if he stays on the field is healthy. Just gets more consistent. More stable production out of him. He's going to give you a return on the investment. Even on the low end. So he's still a safe get. And the odds of him blowing up. Going into year two is still good. Because you got a young player. First round pedigree. Who is also flashed during his rookie season. Giving you a cheap price tag in fantasy right now. Could give you good expectations going into the 2023 season. And that's a player I want to put some chips on. Out of all these players, Jahan Dotson is the guy for me. But who's your guy? I want to hear about that in the comments below. Type that up right now. Let me hear about it. Make sure you hit that subscribe button on the way out. It's only going to help you build your fantasy teams going forward. Redraft, Dynasty, Devi, everything. I got you right here. I want to thank you for watching. Catch you on the next video.